full nodes. I think someone mentioned that by having a full node, you can see the transactions happening on the DevNet. And I wanted to know what what's the best way to access those transactions. Like I have a full node running, but not really sure how to see that if it's with Explorer or something else. And also whether that is the main contribution of running a full node right now, is it uh, allowing the network to be able to run these transactions? As well as what is the traffic that I'm seeing in the node itself? Is it transactions that are generated by you guys, the dev team testing, or is it the community doing testing? Just kind of like get a big picture of where the ecosystem <laughs> is and what's going through the full node. Yeah, so today, if you want to explore the, the, the data on your node, the one way is using Explorer. I think the, the source code for that is public, so you can actually run that locally and point that to your, your own uh, full node. You can actually select it to point to your full node. Awesome. Uh, in terms of what's actually running on there, for the most part, it's community-based uh, uh, activity on the blockchain. And so you'll see some of that happening inside your Explorer. Uh, but what actually is unfortunately the dominating impact right now is uh, effectively our blocks. So you'll, you'll see these block metadata transactions that are being committed at a regular basis. That's basically a commitment that consensus has completed and, and it's moving on to its next round. Uh, in terms of the contribution that it's making to us, one of the things that we're going to start rolling out in DevNet is actually putting a little bit of load on DevNet just to see how all the downstream services handle that type of load. And that's going to be an exposure into what will start happening as we move towards the Sendvice test and eventually into mainnet. And so from our perspective, you're actually providing a lot of value to us because it's really hard to scale out to 10,000 plus nodes and understand how that how the ecosystem handles that type of impact. And for, from your perspective, what you're learning is what it takes to run a potentially production quality full node. And so like today, with the, the lower load that's on there, it's really easy to run these on, on chief services. As we start putting a little bit more load on top of that, it may not uh, uh, scale up for a lot of these uh, uh, either cheap or free services where folks may be running their full nodes today. And as we actually start expecting to bring folks into the validator network, it's going to give you an exposure of what's actually required to support a, a full-time validator, which is going to be a much higher bar than running one of these uh, uh, full nodes. We're already actually doing it. We send uh, occasionally some load to our network. So I think I saw somebody in the chat actually notice like where sometimes our network moves a little faster. Uh, so that's probably us. We're sending some burst of uh, load uh, to the DevNet occasionally, and we're trying to probably make it more regularly running. So we will be generating load uh, more regularly basis on our DevNet going forward. And if you do notice any sort of quirks when we're doing that, we would love to get uh, either feedback or even issues on GitHub stating, hey, I saw this behavior, it didn't expect, match my expectations. Because that's what we're really looking forward so that we can harden our frameworks or just give better advice on making sure that you're running your, your nodes in a, a healthy, uh, reasonable fashion. Awesome. But this is a community-based uh, effort. Like We need to all come together uh, to, to make this successful. Uh, that's a, a lot more details than I was expecting. So thank you for <laughs> such a detailed answer. Uh, I had another question about the the validator. Uh, I think I heard someone said that there is a tutorial uh, to do that, but it would be like running it locally, not really running a validator version that would be connecting to the DevNet right now. Is, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Mostly because we're still trying to wipe our DevNet on a weekly basis. So have other folks running validator know will make this process much longer and painful for us at this stage while we're still very rapidly developing stuff and wiping the chains and bringing new breaking changes. But while we are uh, pro progressing into incentivized testnet, that's when we're going to invite people to run validator node on our network. So yeah, for now, uh, if you wanted to experience running validator node, feel free to start your own local dev, uh, testnet. I, I would also say like a lot of instructions, events, instructions for the full node, map very much to what you would expect to run a validator node. And so that's like setting up your own persistent identity, for instance. OK. And then it, in order to stand up my own validator, 
what else do I need to stand up as well along with that? Other explanations and tutorials for that? Some major pieces for a local testnet is like uh, you have a full validator node. Um, actually, even if you start only one validator node, that works too. You can spin up a network with on, only one validator node. And if you wanted to do some transactions or activities for your own local testnet, you can also try to spin up a faucet and then try to submit transactions against your uh, like a, the full nodes or REST APIs against your own local testnet. There's uh, many things you could do with your local testnet. It depends on what kinds of things you wanted to test and what's the goal you're trying to achieve there. The other thing we have that there's not documentation for, uh, but we can make that public, is we have Terraform, Helm, and Kubernetes uh, configurations for uh, larger testnets. So you can actually run a multiple node uh, testnet that would expose you to a lot of the underlying infrastructure, for instance. Uh, you can actually leverage a technology called Vault for your key management, uh, and then you've got the, the distribution of the nodes, you've got uh, Prometheus collecting metrics, and so there's just a lot of different services. So if you really want to explore it, jump into that uh, Terraform folder and begin exploring there, and we can look into getting more documentation on what's exactly inside that folder in the coming weeks. Cool. And I guess I'm trying to, and I'm very new to a lot of these uh, concepts, so I apologize. Uh, but it, I'm trying to, I guess, grasp the concept of like standing up the local testnet. Is the local testnet composed just of a validator and some client code sending transactions to that validator? Uh, or are there more components that I'm missing that should be stand up along with that to say, now I have a local testnet with a validator running? Yeah, so that, that's why I was uh, alluding to the, the more complicated schemes, including the Terraform and Helm Kubernetes. So the, the local testnet that we have currently described on the website is purely just a, a development environment so that you have your own network for testing and deploying on. It only includes a, what's a, a validator and a faucet. And so there's not, that's not really going to expose you as much as if you want to run a validator, except to be able to poke around and see, here's all the data and bits and pieces that are kind of floating around. Uh, the, the, the greater lesson is going to be uh, starting to embark down that uh, Kubernetes path. But again, documentation will be forthcoming just because th there's a lot of uh, really interesting and meaty topics inside of that space. Awesome. Uh, well, I, I'd set up the full node running the Docker instructions. But honestly, it was so easy. <laughs> that was a breeze. It worked insanely well. Uh, so that's why I want to get exposed to the validator side of things, because I didn't feel like <laughs> I barely did anything setting up the full node, because it, it just worked uh, very well. So kudos to you guys. We need to uh, you guys and send you guys more <laughs> to work on. Definitely more tests, but the goal for t running test nets is that it should be not substantially harder than that. Obviously, when you do run a validator, you have to consider your identity on the validator, your identity perhaps in a wallet, how those are connected, what staking and delegating, all those pieces come together. But again, I believe that we'll have solutions that make it almost as easy as running a full node. Awesome. Uh, but one last question uh, is, is, I know there's a, you know, Roma Ivans mentioned here as, as well as in the media, Medium uh, blog, but I was just wondering if there's going to be a more kind of like detailed roadmap and if that is coming with a white paper or anything else that it's coming out soon or is that going to come down later? All, all of these are, are coming relatively soon. To give you an example, we actually have a meeting later today where we're going to talk about incentivized test nets. We've actually got an initial skeleton of the different things that we're expecting to do and when those things are expected to land. And so as soon as we're comfortable and confident that, that time, those pieces make sense and that timeline makes sense, we'll make it available for the community so you guys can uh, uh, give us feedback. OK, awesome. I was more wondering from the te technical aspects of things, right, uh, in terms of well, what's going to be happening for the next few months. But yeah, awesome. Thank you so They're much, guys. They're directly tied in together. No. Great. Also, for more details on the technical